Hey, folks, how you doing? This is Wayne S. Pierce for the American Liberty Radio Network. How are you? Are you alive and well on this 27th of June, 2017? Well, if you're not, you're not hearing me, so okay then. I'll consider that a no. All right. Anyway, sorry, been a long day. Been a really long day. Uh, not so much. I'm I'm kind of fibbing a little. It's been a really productive day, which is really good, and I like that. Uh, I like how things turned out today. So that was that was really really cool. Now, I want to say this, and I really have to preface it by saying. That people uh, should at least, at least pay attention to what's going on in their local areas. Okay? Just, I mean, seriously. Just pay attention to what's going on in your local areas. Okay? I just want to lay that out there and just... Let you folks, uh, <laughs> let you folks mull that over because a lot of people in their local areas are not paying attention. They're they're not. Oh, they say they are. They say they're paying attention. They say that they have, uh, you know, everything under control. They they they're doing so much to try to you know make things better in their community and all this and other thing and 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 you know what i'm 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 seeing that okay i'm i'm seeing that i'm not seeing over an abundance of of community involvement and looking uh, and looking out into your neighborhoods and and you know protecting them as much as you should. i i see a little bit of that but i don't see a whole lot And the thing is, is that there are people out there who are going to continue, who are going to continue to put their focus on you to stop you, such as terrorist group launches app enabling Muslims to report quote-unquote hate crimes, CARE claims Trump and supporters fueling rise in Islamophobia, (laughs) no, they're not, they being here is fueling our hatred for them. The Council on American Islamic Relations, which has designated a terror which was designated a terrorist group by the UAE, has launched an app designed to enable Muslims and other minority groups to report hate crimes and incidents of bias. In an interview with CNN care spokesman Ibrahim Hooper claimed that the app, which is called Making Democracy Work for Everyone, is particularly important, quote, during a period of increased hate incidents targeting American Muslims and other minority groups, unquote. I'm going to put that on the American Liberty Radio podcast for you to read. I want to say this, and I'm going to make this very clear, and I know this may sound controversial, and frankly, I don't really care anymore. Pack these, pack these quote unquote immigrants, pack them up, get them out of here. I don't care where you send them. I don't care. Get them out of the U.S. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm completely done with the idiocy of people. I'm just, just, you're going to come to this country and try to tear it down? No, ain't going to happen. You're coming here with the sole purpose of killing people. That ain't, that's not going to happen. Okay? Not going to happen. There it is on American Liberty Radio podcast on Facebook. And let me be a little more specific here. And I know I like to be general. I know I like to not really get specific. But there are care needs to be completely and totally disbanded. 
And if they don't do it on their own, we the people have to make sure it gets done. I know that sounds controversial. I know that the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, uh, United Arab Emirates have, has declared CARE a um, terrorist group organization. But that's not enough. We need to get rid of them. That's just the way it is. We need to get rid of them. CNN admits they're fake news. Yep. There you go. Just saying. Just putting it out there. White House Press Secretary urges entire nation to watch CNN's Sting video. Project Veritas video features CNN producer admitting Russia Trump story contrived for ratings. Okay. Contrived for ratings. Flashback. CNN producer who called Trump Russia story BS defend, uh, defendant in fake news lawsuit. John Bonifield, Anderson Cooper, and CNN sued for inventing defamatory, defamatory claims. That's just the way it is. Okay. I just, I, thinking about these, uh, these things coming out about CNN being fake, which they are, uh, you know, all of that. And I'm looking at the people behind it. And you know what? These people are douchebags. <clears throat> For instance... Here's something, <clears throat> excuse me, fake news, <clears throat> fake news, fake news, CNN, oh, something else, that reminded me, something else about CNN, um, when you look at some of the videos that are out there that purport that they use blue screen or green screen or whatever, you need to examine those very, very uh, intently with an investigative eye and a key eye to see differences and comparisons, because that right there will tell you that CNN is fake news, period. End of sentence. Done. That's the example I wanted to use. Fox News' Sean Hannity calls for CNN's Jeff Zucker to be fired in wake of fake news scandal. Undercover video, CNN producer admits uh, Russian narrative, mostly bullcrap, pushed for ratings. How about this? Let me go into this direction. Seattle's minimum wage hike hurting low-level workers, study finds, fight for $15 an hour now crushing paychecks and jobs. California, some restaurants have closed down because they had to pay their people that much. I mean, it's just... Now, I'm going to say this. The U.S. official, a U.S. official, vows Russia and Iran, quote-unquote, are responsible if Assad launches chemical weapons attack. The U.S. ambassador to the U.N. has declared that an attack by Assad's Syrian government on his own citizens will also be blamed on Russia and Iran. Speaking of Russia, three journalists quit CNN in fallout from retracted Russia story. CNN is casting their departure as uh, resignations in the wake of the fiasco. Just, I mean, it's... The mainstream propaganda media news is dying. Now, what better way to show you than to post a video on American Liberty Radio podcast that explains this? I find myself sitting in this chair behind this microphone wondering, hmm, Where's the truth coming from? Someone asked me earlier today, 
and was talking about how they want to find the truth. What is the truth? What is the facts? Where are they? What are they? I didn't really have an answer, but I gave them the best answer I could. And I can tell you this much. There is going to be a continual onslaught of disinformation by once credible news outlets. ABC, CBS, NBC, all that. But not so much now. Because the truth from Alex Jones, Michael Savage, myself, Nick Tucker, Brian Lang, others in the independent, you know, alternative media sector, they're the ones that have the truth. They're the ones that have the facts. But then again, what are truth and facts? How many people are willing to dig deep, deep, deep into these subjects and issues and find the truth and the facts? Regardless of your stance or belief in the way that the news is covered, I can tell you this much with a surety that they know how to fake a news story. I know this for a fact. And the one thing that I find in, 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 from my perspective, the interesting thing that I see from my perspective is the fact that when people view these mainstream propaganda media outlets and they start touting, oh, it's true because I heard it here and I heard it there and that newscaster wouldn't, you know, isn't known to lie and all this and the other thing. When I hear this, I know for a fact that that person is looking at fake news. Or I should say, let me put it this way, is looking at news that is embellishing uh, the story itself without backing it up with facts. So I know this. I understand this. It's there. It's right there. There's no, no getting around that. I do know, though, that when we look at a news story, when we see a headline, our minds shoot right to the, you know, edge of, of speculation. We see a news story, we see a headline, we don't read the story, and our first thought is, oh yeah, you know, and we start getting very negative. Until we read the story, then we go, oh, that, that's a very deceiving headline. Because they understand, and they know, and they have this whole process, even through psychological manipulation, where... They are told and taught how to develop their skills for propaganda and how to say words in such a way, in a rhythmic way, for you to get captured within their paradigm. You ever read a headline and then read the article and thought, doesn't match? That's exactly what I'm saying. They say things to get you pulled into the article. <clears throat> they say things... And print this big bold face uh, article, I mean the headline, and then they don't even talk about it in the article mostly. This is what you get on the internet called clickbait. They put this big thing out there, and then you got to click on it, and then three or four different ads pop up on your up on your screen. So I do know. I do know, because I've taken journalism, I do know how it works. I do know how a person can sit down to write a story, to journal a story, and that's why they're called journalists, to, jur to journal a story, to write the story about what happened. I know from that point of view what that takes. But I also know that there's going to be somebody looking at you every step of the way to make sure that you don't reveal any secrets or, you know, say things that are going to be wacky and put the, 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 you know, the organization, you know, into a different light for people, you know, they're, they don't want the general citizenry to think they're crazy for hiring you. So basically, the difference is, I can sit down and write a truthful, factual article 
But, you know, in this hypothetical situation that I'm talking about, my editor or my assistant editor or somebody else in a suit can come to me and say, Wayne, don't write that because you can change this to this and make it sound, you know, better. And it's like they're trying to convince me not to tell the truth. In other words, the mainstream propaganda media out there, both in the uh, press and in the uh, in in visual and TV and all of that, and on the networks, is a bunch of it's a scam. It's fraudulent. It's fake. And they don't care. They don't care. Now you can take a couple of people like Michael Savage and Sean Hannity, and they'll tell you the truth, and it's the truth. But, I don't know, excuse me, we had some excitement last uh, last, uh, weekend, this past weekend, here uh, in Bozeman, Montana, we had Red Pill Expo, and the patriots from around the world gathered to spread the truth. The Red Pill Expo sends message to globalist Millie Weaver from Infowars.com. Had uh, a lot to say. Now, I'm going to put this on American Liberty Radio podcast because there's a couple of videos there. So you might want to go check those out. Now, sorry, excuse me. I was yawning and I didn't want to yawn. I was trying to hold it, and it didn't happen. So anyway, I want to point out, before I go to the break at the bottom of the hour, that there is a there is a definite push by the globalists to... To eradicate this world of anybody who has a conservative mindset, a a patriotic uh, stance, uh, uh, freedom, liberty-minded people, there is a push to get rid of them. At the Red Pill Expo here in uh, in Bozeman, Montana, Millie Weaver uh, from InfoWars wrote, Exclusive Finnegan Widow interview and Moncton's warning to BLM Bureau of Land Management could be facing RICO actions, Moncton reveals. InfoWars reporter Millie Weaver speaks with Jeanette Finnegan, the widow, the widow of slain land rights advocate uh, Lavoy Finnegan, during the 2017 Red Pill Expo. In the heart-wrenching interview, Jeanette reveals how she found out about the death of her husband who was killed during an altercation with state and federal agents in Oregon and how the government continues to harass her family to this day. Millie also caught up with Lord Christopher Moncton to discuss the federal government's mistreatment of the Finnegan family and the news that the Bureau of Land Management could be facing RICO actions as well as the closure of their agency. Moncton's, Moncton says... He's been diligently working in the back channels with the Trump administration and would quit, won't quit until justice is served. I'm going to put that on American Liberty Radio podcast on Facebook. Several questions that come to mind, first of all, it wasn't so much an altercation in Oregon where Lavoy Finnegan was killed. It was an outright hit. I'm telling you straight up, that's what it was. Now, if if there were people that could come forward and literally tell me exactly what happened from the federal uh, point of view, from the federal government's point of view, and tell me what's happened and how and why and who did this. And who. if they can come forward to me and give me the details of everything, that would be a good start to finding out exactly what happened. 
because as far as I'm concerned, from my perspective, that was a murder. And the Bureau of Land Management and all of those people that went down, that went up to Oregon and did what they did should be arrested and thrown in prison. The same thing with the Bundy Ranch down in Bunkerville, Nevada. The people that forced Ammon and his brother and Cliven to do what they did, and and the Bureau of Land Management came in there on the orders of Harry Reid to disrupt that family, to take away their land, and that's the way it is. These people that came in there to do that should be arrested and thrown in prison. And don't give me this crap that, well, you know, there were armed people down there. What would you do if somebody from the government came and tried to take your land? Yeah, if other people heard about it days before and came to your site, your property, and defended your right to have your property, yeah. So I don't want to hear any more crap from you people out there that have this idea that, well, he didn't pay pay his grazing fees. If you go back and listen to interviews that he's done, he said he paid it to the state, not to the federal government, because that's where it belongs. So I don't want to hear it anymore. You people are dumber than dirt. Just shut up and go away, because you have nothing to say to me or anybody else. I know the truth. I know the facts. It's all right there. It's all in the open. Clive and Bundy didn't do anything wrong. So I don't want to hear it anymore. But then again, as I said just in the beginning of that rant, somebody better come forward and give me all the freaking details of what happened there as well, as well as what happened in Oregon. Give me every cent. Give me a timeline. Give me a timeline. Shoot me a timeline. What happened at this time? What happened at that time? What? That? No, 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 no. I'm going to back it up with all the video that was out there done and all the interviews that were done by... Infowars and David Knight and Pete Santilli from Guerrilla Media Network. I'm going to back it all up. And if you're wrong, you're getting sued. Because I'm going to hand all that off to the right people and they're going to come after you. So I don't want to hear it anymore. Lavoy Finnegan was murdered by the federal government. Period. Give me a timeline. Tell me I'm wrong. Shoot me a time limit. I got, hey, I, American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. So I don't want to hear it. The BLM needs to be abolished. The Bureau of Land Management needs to be abolished, period. End of sentence. Because they cannot manage one damn thing correctly. Anytime, and this is true, anytime the government puts their hands into something to try to make it better, they destroy it for their own political agenda, period. Don't like it? Don't care. I didn't say I was going to be nice today. But enough of that rant. I know the truth and the facts. Do you? I doubt it. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. It just pisses me off that nobody has the backbone or the guts to do anything about anything much. And what they do do is very appreciative. But we don't need pockets of people to do things in their area which is all good, don't get me wrong, we don't need that as much as we need hundreds, if not tens of millions of people to do something. But nobody has the backbone or the balls to do it. Nobody. The little skirmishes, the little riots, the little things going on over the place, the defense of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights by patriots of the United States in and around the United States itself, little pockets here and there. Yeah, that's all great. Give you all a high five. But there needs there needs to be more people out in the streets. There needs to be tens of millions of people out in the streets right now. Right now. Enough of this bull crap. 
We need to put the new world, new world order in their place. We need to put Pelosi and Reed and Sanders and Hillary. All, they all need to go to prison, period. End of sentence. Why? Because they've committed treason against the United States of America by facilitating the actions of their constituents to create the riots and the chaos in America. Period. Not going to say any more than that, because you people already are smart enough to figure it out. So, I know, I know, I know. I'm going to go to break early, like five minutes early. So, just want to calm down, just want to get my, collect my thoughts, just kind of, you know, do what I got to do, you know. (laughs) All right, I just got to, all right. So three and a half minutes, I'll be back. Don't go. I'm I'm okay now. I'm just it's just gonna you know. All right. Are you good? We we good? All right. Cool. I'll be back right after this. Don't go away. This is American Liberty Radio Network, American Liberty Radio dot Weebly dot com. Broadcasting from FEMA Region 8, sharing the truth one fact at a time, without all the BS. This is the American Liberty Radio Network. The people of the world are now seeing what the globalists have always intended. They are engaged in a campaign to rid the world of 90% of humanity. They are well on their way of achieving this. But, with the corrupt mainstream media aligning themselves with such diabolical philosophies, the globalists are now being exposed and the people are now seeing them for who they truly are, thanks for the most part to the independent media revealing the connection of the mainstream media to globalists like George Soros and others who invest and spread disinformation. Don't say you haven't been warned. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. Distortedreality.podbean.com And Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on American Liberty Radio Network. Sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.com There's a show that's not afraid to ask the questions no one else will ask. Not afraid to say what no one else will say. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Listen to Restricted Airspace with Tina Marie. Where no topic is off limits. Conspiracy theories. Paranormal activities. Hoaxes. The unexplained. It's what we talk about. Question everything. Trust no one. Restricted Airspace with Tina Tina Marie. Marie. Friday at 7 p.m. On the KCOR Digital Radio Network out of Las Vegas, Nevada. For two centuries, we've done the hard work of freedom. We lead the world in facing down a threat to decency and humanity. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations 
are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. In order to ensure the security and continuing stability, the Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. The triumph of democratic ideas and the continuing struggle for freedom elsewhere all confirm the wisdom of our nation's founders. So this is how liberty dies. With thunderous applause. Hey folks, welcome back. Take a little break there. Gotta calm down. Gotta, you know, go into my zen mode, you know. Just sit there and, I don't know. Let me ask y'all a question. I like to ask questions and I'd like you to interact with me because I don't see too much of that on the Spreaker side of things or emails from folks. So please interact with me at American Liberty Radio at usa.com american liberty radio at usa.com please i'd like to hear from you you can also pop a comment on the spreaker side of things over at american liberty radio on spreaker check that out as well you can go to the website at american liberty radio dot weebly dot com american liberty radio dot weebly dot com yeah check things out folks So I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to put your thinking caps on for this one, because it's going to be a little deep. Not your waders, not your boots, put on your thinking cap, (laughs) okay? It's the wrong end of the body, okay? I'm just saying. Think about this. Here's the question. If you were in a situation that required you to defend yourself and anyone around you, Would you? Simple question. If you were in a situation that you had to defend yourself and anyone else around you, would you? That's a good question because we're surrounded by people who want to kill us. I'm not kidding you one bit. All I can say is, somebody ain't going home, and somebody's going to have a bad day. And let me sum it up really simply with this, and here's my answer to that question. I would. There's no doubt about it. There's no flinching whatsoever. Yes, I would. I want to ask all you parents out there something. I was a step-parent for quite a few months. And I got a quick lesson in trying to understand my own patience and understand, you know, teenagers. Now, got to consider that we were all teenagers once, Why? right? Or, 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 <laughs> are we right? We were all teenagers at one point. And moms, you know your daughters. Fathers, you know your sons. Maybe not as well as you'd like, but you know. U.S., well, let me give you the headline. U.S. drops Iraq, uh, Myanmar from child soldiers list amid human rights groups outcry. What? 
U.S. Department, uh, U.S. State Department has dropped the Iraq uh, Myanmar from a child soldier's blacklist in its annual people trafficking report. Despite multiple reports of continuous usage of children in armies and militias, the human rights activists outcry. The annual tracking of persons report unveiled by U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Senior President's Advisor and daughter Ivanka Trump on Tuesday left out Iraq and Myanmar, Myanmar, is that what it is, formerly uh, known as Burma, off the Child Soldiers Prevention Act list. Quote, by leaving out Burma and Iraq, the State Department is denying facts on the ground. The government of Burma released over 60 children from its ranks just last Friday, and there are continued new reports of children being recruited by the National Armed Forces, unquote, the Children's Rights Advocate Director, Advocacy Director of Human Rights Watch, Joe Becker, told RT. I'm going to put this, uh, there was a video, but apparently the file cannot be played. That's what it says. I'm going to put this on American Liberty Radio uh, podcast for you guys to take a look at. There's more, obviously. So, so parents, what would you do if our military just came came to your door and just said, your son and daughter have to register for the draft? I mean, there's no, you don't have a say in the matter. Your your son or daughter has to go with them. There's no question, N- none. Just it no. What would you do? I myself would say hell no, and slam the door in their face, and tell my wife two things: call the lawyer. And get bail money. Because I know damn well I'm going to be going to jail. (laughs) You know? But what would you parents do if the federal government of the United States of America, specifically Washington, D.C., more specifically the Department of uh, Armed Forces, came to your house and said, your son or daughter has to go into the military? Are they, have they graduated high school? If they have, they're coming with us. What what would you what would you do? It's a good question because obviously, I mean, we have to talk about this stuff because in other countries such as Burma, they're recruiting children to be in the army. Okay, I mean that's you know. Is Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and and advisor uh, Ivanka Trump uh, ignoring the facts in all of this? Huh. I can just say that I don't know because I'm not there and I'm not privy to their meetings, so I have no idea. White House Press Secretary urges entire nation to watch CNN Sting video. I uh, said that earlier, I think. So let me... uh, Put it up there for you guys to watch. I'm sure it's, yeah, yep, yep. I just wanted to make sure before I shared it that the video was there. The world is, the world is literally coming unglued. The world is coming unglued and a lot of people do not care at all ever they look at their own life and say well what can I do for me well let me let me let me let me let me put it to you this way okay you have a hundred people in a room you have a hundred people in a room you give them a a, a, a ten uh, item questionnaire and on one of those questions it says or it should say or it might say 
It might say and ask, are you willing to defend your country as it stands right now? And of course, all these other questions like would the, you know, would you, you know, just hand over your kids to the federal government if they came and all this, you know. So it has all these questions. Ten questions. Have, have, has, has these questions. I can tell you that out of that room of a hundred people, out of a hundred people, I would say about 30 of them would stand on the side of the federal government. And they would be actively pursuing any orders from the federal government or any concepts that they think they need to use to come after you. That's about 30%. And the other 70% would, I would say, hogtie these people and, you know, take care of the situation the best way they knew how. But I would say out of 320 million people in the U.S., I would say somewhere in the vicinity of about 30 to 35 percent of the people, if not more, would be on the side of the federal government. It's just a thought experiment. What if, you know, something you may want to try, you may want to try it with smaller, you know, a group of people like maybe 10 or 20 or something. You may want to create a a 10 item questionnaire page and and see where these people are coming from what's that old adage uh, uh i can't remember now it's uh, i'll move on keep your friends closer your enemies closer or something like that let me move on i don't want to belabor that thought and i'll go here it's important, and, and I want to say this because it is, uh, it, it is what it is. And I want to, I'm going to go here. I'm going to, I had a thought, but I'm, I'm going to go here first. Okay. I'm going to go here first. Here's a victory. For President Trump, Supreme Court says Trump's travel ban lawful. Trump vindicated after court rules in his favor. I would say, let's take a look at that. The Supreme Court of the United States of America, okay, despite the attempts of the Ninth and Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals to derail President Trump's agenda, the Supreme Court has ruled that the travel ban is, in fact, lawful under the Constitution. Let's take a look at that. What if, and yes, it's a what if, what if, what if this travel ban wasn't unconstitutional I mean excuse me wasn't constitutional but was in fact unconstitutional and what about this let's put an A next to that what about this what if the Supreme Court was stacked in favor of passing this particular verdict what if what if it was unconstitutional, which, of course, it, it never has been and never will be now that the Supreme Court has said so. When he first when President Trump first proposed this, I knew it was constitutional. Because if you look at the uh, Immigration and Nationaliz- Nationalization Act, Nationality Act, <coughs> sorry, when you look at the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952, you will see that people coming into this country have to be vetted, have to have background checks, period. Because anybody coming into this country, <coughs> excuse me, anybody coming into this country that has any ideas to overthrow this country or be dis- divisive in any way or whatever is banned from ever being here. Okay? 
Excuse me, I got something caught in my throat there. So it is constitutional. Supreme Court said so, so everybody can shut up now and move on to something else that you're going to try to scare the patriots with. Eric Trump slams leftists calling for father's assassination, rips Dem party, ridicules bankrupt defunct DC DNC as obstructionists and losers. By the way, he's not the only one in history that has done that. Go back in history and go look at the obstructionist with the abolitionists. Go look back at those people who didn't want a true blue constitutional republic. Go look at the history. We're in this, I don't we're in the freaking twilight zone is where we're at. But everything is exactly how it was planned to play out in the last 100 years. But look before that. Go on. It's amazing how <clears throat> it's amazing how people forget history or don't even want to look at history. They don't care. They don't care at all. <sighs> Let's go to Breitbart. Let's go to Breitbart, see what's uh, going on there. Softcore fake news. Playboy Mag rushes to CNN's defense in White House briefing. White House, CNN, a disgrace to all media, to all journalism. Coulter on Senate health care bill, like buying Golden West Financial right before they crash. Ann Coulter, CBO, Congressional Budget Office, will always trash Obamacare repeal if individual mandate ends. Mark Zuckerberg compares Facebook to churches. Ooh, what? Yeah, let's go take a look at that one. This is on Breitbart.com. Go check that out. Mark Zuckerberg recently stated, oh, by the way, this is Lucas Nolan, the 27th of June, 2017. Thank you, Lucas, over at Breitbart. Mark Zuckerberg recently stated his desire to have Facebook act as a community for its users replacing churches and community support groups. Speaking at Facebook's first communities summit in Chicago last week, Mark Zuckerberg discussed a number of topics, including Facebook's new mission statement which was changed from connecting the world to a new goal to, quote, give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together, unquote. Following criticism that Facebook was complicit in the spread of fake news, Zuckerberg stated, quote, our mission is is our mission of connecting people that was not supposed to be controversial. So now the question is, why is it that controversial, uh, why is it that a controversial thing and how do you rebuild that, unquote? He's trying to rebrand Facebook. He's trying to regroup and reset because, well, you know. That's just the way Mark Zuckerberg is. Zuckerberg stated his desire to have Facebook act as a networking tool to help people connect and develop communities and the importance of community leaders and moderators. Quote, a church doesn't just come together. It has a pastor who cares for uh, the well-being of their congregation, makes sure that they have food and shelter. A little league team has a coach who motivates the kids to help them uh, hit better. Leaders set the culture, inspire us, give us a safety net and look out for us, unquote. Huh. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, huh. Does, does that sound familiar, folks? That's on American Liberty Radio podcast. I want you all to know, and I'm going to end tonight. I was going to go two hours, but I thought, yeah, pfft, I'll go one hour. I want you all to know that independent media, alternative media doesn't survive, doesn't, uh, you know, keep on going without your help. 
And in the community of itself, independent media, independent authors and filmmakers and musicians and and author did I have said authors already? Yeah. Independent people who don't cater to the surrounding uh, philosophies or uh, surrounding concepts of, of the group think, as Orwell talked about, or as you see in a lot of these other books by Orwell and others, Aldous Huxley. We have a community of people that stand strong for something they believe in. And independent media, alternative media, is part of that community. And within that community, you've got two choices. Either support those around you in the, for the positive goal of enriching the community, or don't, and watch the community fail. I grew up in Stockton, California, and I can tell you that there were many, many neighborhoods, brand new houses, brand new everything, and it looked great. It was, I mean, every, everything looked great in these areas. Brand new homes, brand new duplexes, developing, you know, all this, all over the place. Within five years, the neighborhoods look like crap because the community did not care. There was no community leaders. There was no uh, activist uh, groups out there making sure that the parks were safe. There were no liaisons between those communities and the police department to make sure that no crime were, uh, crimes were committed in the area. There wasn't any of that. And that's only part of the community. Independent and alternative media is the centerpiece of that community. Now, you remember way back when they had town criers. They had people in the courtyards, you know, hear ye, hear ye, you know, all that. The alternative and uh, independent media are fashioned in that design to be the town crier, to be that those people such as Alex Jones and Michael Savage, myself and Brian Lang and Nick Tucker and all, all of us are part of that community wherever we're at in the United States of America, and we are that town crier. We are that that place you can go to to get the news, to have these journalists. Years ago, these people would go out and ask, you know, the store owners, the neighbors, hey, what's going on in your city today? Hey, what's happening down the road? Oh, I saw some things happening. Can you, you know, fill me in on what's going on? They would write that down, and when printing became one of the most industrious things in history at, the, at that moment, people were printing journals and, and newspapers, newspapers, and basically what it was was one person or two people going out and making a journal of what was going on, hence the word journalist. The independent media and alternative medias are the same way. I can sit behind this microphone all day long, but until I go out there and to see what's going on or read something from another part of the country in another place, I don't know what's going on. When I can go downtown here in Billings, Montana, or read in the Billings Gazette what's happening downtown, I can tell you about it. And in national news, I can look at CBS, uh, uh, CBS, NBC, CBS. I, I can look at all these stations, all these manufactured stations that are out there, all these people that are going to say, no, what that person journaled, what that person talked about, what that person said in that community newspaper is not right. It's totally you know, false, and here's the real news. They're placing fake news in the, you know what fake, now I'm going to say what fake news is. You know it is fake news. Let me tell you what fake news is. Disinformation. That's all it is. So a community comes together with their independent and alternative media and says, what's the truth? Well, we go out and look for it. We go out and find it. We go out and hold those people accountable for what they say. <clears throat> We hold the likes of CNN and Fox uh, accountable 
for what they say and responsible for the actions that have been taken because of those fake stories that they put out. The community deserves to have the best alternative and, and independent media that they can have. Now, I've got plans for American Liberty Radio Network. But I'd like you to consider contributing to those plans. And here's my first plan. Yeah, it's a multitask plan. It's multi-level plan that I have here. First, I'm looking to expand in other areas. Or I should say, let me be more specific. I'm looking to take, instead of what I have now at what Spreaker has allotted me to have, which is three hours, I want to expand that to five so I can bring you onto the network in your community as your independent voice. That'll give you some time. That's one thing I want to do. And as time goes on, I'll tell you some other things I'd like to do. But that's just the first step. American Liberty Radio is your voice for the community, your community. We can all come together. We can all work together. We can all, you know, talk to one another, I'm sure. But if you have any questions about that, don't hesitate to ask. Contact me, American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. And it can be overseas, too. It's okay. I got people listening to this network from overseas. It's fine. And do that. But without American Liberty Radio Network and and without the, uh, you know, independent and alternative networks in your community, we wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't have a voice. We wouldn't be here. So your support for alternative media and independent media in your area, including American Liberty Radio Network, is very crucial. It's very crucial. Your voice needs to be heard. You can even send me articles that you write that I can report on here. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. So with that said, please consider supporting American Liberty Radio Network. I'm looking for advertisers that want to advertise on the network. That's fine. Go to AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com. Go to the sponsors page. All the information you need is right there. If you don't want to do that, right there on that same page, become a patron. There's a link down there for you. Drop a dollar in the kitty so we can keep the lights on around here. Okay, you guys rock, and it's important to understand what community is and and the voice of the community. Who is that voice of the community, and what are they saying, and how are they saying it? That's the important part. That's number one on the list. How are they saying what they're saying? I'm not going to go into this huge psychological aspects of neuro-linguistic programming, but again... How are they saying and talking to you in the community? How are they saying what they're saying? Who wrote it? How were they wrote it? How did they write it? You know, all that. So think about contributing to American Liberty Radio Network for the sake of your community. And you can do the same thing. It's your voice. So there you go. Folks, I got to get out of here. Email me at American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. And folks, this is American Liberty Radio Network, sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. <laughs>